I've been painting with gouache consistently since spring of 2023. During my journey, I've painted a series of flower landscapes, patterns of fruits and vegetables, and portraits of cacti and succulents. Before gouache, I painted exclusively with watercolor. I'm growing in my creativity and flexibility in using multiple media, and I'm so glad that gouache is a part of it. If you're new here, hello and welcome. My name is Audrey, and welcome to my studio. In this video, I wanna share some of my most used supplies for gouache. This list will differ from artist to artist because we all have our own preferences. But if you look at my work, these are the supplies that I'm using the majority of the time. You'll notice that a lot of these supplies can also be used for watercolor. So that's why if you started with watercolor, the transition to gouache will be somewhat seamless. I'll try to be clear when I describe the supplies that I already had in my possession and which ones I had to purchase. Let's start with paints. I've actually tried a few gouache brands and decided that I like Holbein the best. Yes, I am a brand ambassador for Holbein, but I fell in love with the Holbein brand way before I became an ambassador. The paints are so creamy, they reactivate easily, and they're incredibly opaque. In other brands, I've seen streaky lines. Sometimes they dry chalky. The lighter colors aren't as opaque. I have difficulty reactivating them. And it's really frustrating to use paints like this. Holbein gouache is only available in tubes, which is common for most gouache brands. You can squeeze them into pans and let them dry. I like to use fresh paint and put them in a palette. I'll share more about palettes later on because sometimes I do let the paints dry so I can reuse them. I have a few videos of my overview of Holbein paints. So this video was back in 2021 when I first got my set of 12 colors. And this second one was more recent and it reviews the Iridori collection. Colored pencils. While I've used cheap color pencils before, I decided to invest in the Caran d'Ache Pablo color pencils. It's soft to draw with and you can check out the full swatching in this video. Pencils. I've become somewhat of a pencil snob now thanks to being part of this art world. So when it comes to drawing, it's really important that I'm able to erase the graphite with ease. The drafting pencil from Generals is a current favorite. It maintains a sharp point for a really long time and erasers have no problem with it. I also use watercolor pencils from time to time. I use them for sketching out my painting like I did with these fruit and vegetable patterns. I have various watercolor pencils from different brands like Stettler, Winsor & Newton, and Generals. And I'm partial to Stettler just because I've had it the longest, but I'm not too particular about the brand because I'm not really using them to paint with, but rather just to sketch with. Erasers. A kneaded eraser is a must, must, must especially if you sketch before you paint. You may have noticed that it's difficult to erase pencil lines once you've painted over them. And kneaded erasers do the hard part of removing the graphite without compromising the paper's quality. Plus, they last forever. I probably had this kneaded eraser for five plus years, and I've only cleaned it a few times. The other eraser that I've used a lot is the Faber-Castell eraser. It leaves some eraser shavings, but it is dust-free. And I'm just one of those people that want to use up a product before I immediately jump to a new one. So I did review all of these erasers from Generals, and I really do like a lot of them. But I really want to be as, you know, eco-friendly as I can just by using up what I already have instead of hoarding supplies. Brushes. Since I paint mostly smaller paintings, my brushes will be on the smaller to medium sizes. To cover the background layer really quickly, I like to use a round size 6 or slightly larger brush, maybe a size 10. I also really like to use the flat brush. I like using the flat more than the oval or mop brush because they tend to hold a lot of water. And I don't know if it's just the way that I paint, but I found that it wasn't moving the paint really smoothly on the paper, but the flat doesn't hold as much. And so it's really good at just moving the paint along as long as the consistency is, um, is pretty smooth. My go-to brushes are the round shape in sizes three and six. They feel the most comfortable in my hand. I don't feel like I have to draw so big or paint really, really tiny. 
And for finer details, I'll use a smaller round brush in the sizes one or two. Watercolor paper. I've used a variety of paper for my gouache painting so far. I first started out using cold press watercolor paper because that's what I'm used to. And it's a great starting off point if you're used to watercolor. The watercolor journal that I used, the Reflections brand from Jerry's Artorama is cold pressed paper. It's double sided. And yeah, this, this is really great. It does have a little bit of that surface texture because that's what cold pressed paper is. So if you want something that's a little smoother, you want to use hot pressed paper. I haven't seen too many journals with hot pressed paper. So if you know of any good art journals that are you know pretty thick in pages and are smooth like hot press, let me know in the comments. Lastly, I also recommend mixed media. So I got this bound journal from the Canson brand and I really liked it because it was bound. I can easily just keep all of my practice paintings together. So when I first started learning gouache, this sketchbook really came in handy because I would use the leftover paint in my palette instead of just letting it dry or, you know, like if I needed to clean it out, then I would try to use it up. And I literally just practiced paint consistency, practice my strokes, I try to practice like value. I remember painting these marigolds after I painted them for my live stream. I was just so in love with the color, just how rich they are. And I just wanted to keep painting. And so I did. Again, trying to practice consistency and value and then just painting more florals again. This really helped me because doing something like this is no pressure, right? You're just learning about your supplies. You don't have to, you know, create some kind of like final artwork. You're just practicing. So I think it's really important when you have a sketchbook like this to just take advantage of it. I don't know why this page is blank, but <laughs> I did actually use this also for my watercolor illustrations, but I made sure not to use too much water because so mixed media is a thinner paper. So if you use too much water, you're going to see some warping and buckling. So I just made sure to, yeah, really be careful of that. So I did do some watercolor illustrations in here. And these were part of my sticker collection. Oh, I didn't finish these hedgehogs. <laughs> oh, and then I just have some sketches that I haven't yet painted. And again, these are pages that I don't normally show, you know, the world, but this is just practice. This was also part of my cacti collection. And again, just sketching some more, just practicing. And these are all things that I plan on painting. I just haven't gotten to them yet. And that's it so far. And I still have several pages left at the end. Other supplies that I use pretty regularly. This one is the Uniball Signo White Gel Pen. I use this all the time to add those fine white details like highlights or just accents. And I think I bought a pack of three and I'm still on my first one. And there's still plenty of ink left. Love this. Mwah. Next palettes. I've used this ceramic palette for a lot of my 100 day project. You've seen it all the time. And I've only changed out the colors in this palette a handful of times. The only downside to an open palette like this is that there's no cover. It will collect dust over time or cat hair. <laughs> so you just want to be mindful of that. But if you're just using it to practice, like this is good enough. Ceramic palettes won't stain over time. So it's really easy to clean. I just run it under warm water and then I will either use a sponge that's exclusively used for my paints or if there isn't a lot of paint, I'll just use a thick wad of paper towel and just scoop it up. Another palette that I love is the Stay Wet palette. So the Stay Wet palette I did have to purchase. By the way, all of these items you can find in the description box below. I have a whole page on my website called Audrey's Favorite Supplies so you can find that you can find everything there. So the Stay Wet palette is called exactly that because it's meant to help your paints stay wet. It actually has a lid. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> and there's, oh, you know what? The sponge is very, very dry. <laughs> so this is already used, obviously, but there is a sponge. 
There's a sponge at the bottom and you just soak this in water and it'll expand a little bit. Right now there's some space on the sides. And then there's these palette papers. I use the ones that come with this brand. I haven't used actual palette paper or acrylic paper. I haven't really used anything like that. But this paper is meant to kind of absorb the water from the sponge and then it kind of seeps in and then it keeps the paint on top, you know, wet. As long as you keep it airtight, then yeah, it should stay dry. So this is great even for other wet media like acrylic gouache and acrylics because you may really want to save some of those colors or color mixtures that you've made. And yeah, and this will be a huge help. Now you do want to open the lid every once in a while just to prevent mold from happening. I personally haven't seen mold happening. This is just dark paint. <laughs> a palette like this will really last you a long time, especially if you use the same colors over and over again. So that's why I really advocate for, you know, just having a handful of colors that you tend to use all the time. Like I said, that's why I barely changed out these colors. And if there is a one-off color every now and then, you can use something like this. Like you can see that I have a bright blue over here. I think in my old palette sheet, I had purple. And when it's time to change this out because you're running out of space or whatever, then you can use up the rest of the paint on this palette and put it in a sketchbook like this, just practicing some more. That way, nothing really goes to waste. And and you're learning and growing as an artist too. So that's the Stay Wet palette. I also use washi tape a lot. Washi tape is basically decorative tape. It's repositionable, so it's not as tacky. There are certain brands of washi tape that I gravitate towards because of the way that it adheres to my paper. But in general, yeah, you can't really go wrong with washi tape. There are different widths. There are those that are pretty standard widths. I think this is maybe like half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. And then there are those that are very skinny, like a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch. So it just really depends on what you're using it for. If you're using it to hold your paper onto your surface, then you wanna go with a thicker washi tape or even artist tape or masking tape or painter's tape. So if you're using it for masking and you want to create like sharp lines within your painted area, then you might wanna use skinnier washi tape. Either way, I use washi tape for a lot of other things. I use it to seal envelopes, to spruce up my journals. They're just so pretty and so fun. <laughs> A hair dryer is also really helpful if you want to speed up the drying process. That is something that I've used with watercolor as well. A spray bottle like this is really helpful for keeping your paints fresh. And I use it to re-wet the sponge in my Stay Wet palette. I use it to reactivate the paints that are on my ceramic palette. I use this to reactivate my watercolors. So I use this all the time. And that is all of the supplies that I use for gouache. Like I explained at the beginning, most of these supplies are transferable and useful for watercolor. So whether you're going from gouache to watercolor or watercolor to gouache, it's so great that a lot of these supplies can be used for both. Let me know in the comments if you had any questions or if you're curious about other supplies that other artists have used or you have used, please make sure to subscribe and like this video. If you're just at the start of your gouache journey, I'm really excited for you. So glad you're here. I will definitely have a lot more gouache videos coming out so that you can build your confidence and paint with freedom. Thank you so much for watching my video. And again, if you're a watercolor artist and wanna try gouache, you might wanna watch this video because I will tell you 10 reasons why you're going to love gouache if you also love watercolor. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.